Welcome to Snow Recaps. Today I will be explaining a movie called Fantasy Island. Released in the year 2020, Julia is waiting on the beach for the plane with the guests to arrive and when she finally sees it, she excitedly runs off toward the hotel to inform Rourke, and then they both leave his office. Melanie is the first of the guests to exit the plane, followed by JD and his brother, Rex. As soon as Patrick gets out of the plane, he turns and helps Gwen come out as well. Julia, Mr. Rourke's personal assistant, greets them on the pier and congratulates them on winning the contest. Meanwhile, Damon is observing them from afar. JD and Brax are told to wait at the bar until their rooms are ready while the others proceed to theirs. Patrick has a weird encounter with his valet and Melanie begins unpacking. Julia brings Gwen to her room and they talk about Rourke and how he's able to execute everybody's fantasies on the island based on a questionnaire. Julia gives her a mysterious answer and when she walks out of Gwen's room she gets a nosebleed. Gwen prepares for the evening when she hears something and investigates. Then then she sees a reflection of a burned man in the mirror who isn't there when she turns around. Later, she joins the others, with JD and Brack still waiting for their room and messing with Patrick. Melanie crashes their conversation, being super forward in her advances toward Patrick and asking everyone what their fantasy is, but they get to talking about how it's done instead. Suddenly, Rourke arrives and officially welcomes them to Fantasy Island and informs the guests about the two rules. There is only one fantasy per guest and they must play out their fantasy in full, Rourke says that only the island knows how the fantasy will play out. The first guests to have their fantasy start on the island are the brothers. So Rourke takes them to the fantasy saying they wanted to have it all. What they get is a huge mansion with an ongoing party. They have fun in their fantasy until the mysterious figure of the burned man appears there as well. The next morning, Gwen is called into Mr. Rourke's office, where he tells her that the fantasy in her questionnaire is a little more abstract but he sees it as a challenge he is more than willing to accept. Rourke explains that he can help her deal with the thing she regrets most so Gwen tells him that she wishes she had a daughter with her ex-boyfriend Alan and that her regret was declining his proposal of marriage. Rourke gets up and shows her to a door that holds her secret fantasy, telling her that it will allow her to change that moment. Gwen is a bit unsure, but she opens the doors, realizing she had entered the restaurant where Alan proposed to her five years ago and he is there waiting for her as well. Rourke shows them to their seat and tells Gwen to enjoy. At first, she is a little confused about what is happening, thinking they brought her actual Alan on the island. Rourke tells her that on Fantasy Island, everything will be as real as she makes it. Meanwhile, Patrick and Melanie talk about their own fantasies. He tells her that he wants to play soldier because he always wanted to be one, but became a cop and ended up behind a desk because of an incident. Melanie's fantasy is revenge on her high school bully. She was so bothered by her that she even had to see a shrink. Nicknamed Dr. Torture, Rourke arrives and gives her the instructions for her fantasy so Melanie goes to an elevator that takes her down to a control room. Melanie sees a flashing red light and pushes the button. Her bully Sloane is revealed strapped to a chair. She thinks Sloane is a hologram and gets ready to torture her. The first button gives Sloane an electric shock and the second pours toilet water on. The third button plays a video of her having an affair and another button posts the video to Sloane's Facebook. The next shows her husband watching it and talking to what is supposed to be Sloane on the phone. He says that she's been missing for two days, prompting Melanie to realize that it's actually Sloane. Simultaneously, Rourke drives Patrick to his fantasy, leaving him in the middle of the island. Later, Patrick is in a military uniform, walking aimlessly when Damon grabs him and tells him that people die there, then vanishes as soldiers appear behind Patrick. They suspect his story and decide to take him back to their commanding officer. The two brothers sit next to the pool when Brax confesses that he feels like an inconvenience in his brother's life, though JD thinks otherwise. Gwen is in the restaurant with Alan when he proposes to her again and this time she accepts. JD and Brax put on the same outfit and explore their mansion, finding a panic room and wondering if all rich people have panic rooms in their mansions. Next, they discover that they also have an armory, where they find all kinds of weapons, guns, and grenades. They go to the beach to play with the grenades and when they fire one in the ocean, 
Patrick, and the soldiers hear it on the other side of the island. The soldiers bring Patrick back to their commanding officer, and when he sees him, he freaks out, calling out to Rourke that it isn't what he asked for. The soldier reads his dog tags and asks why his own name is on them. Suddenly, enemy combatants fire on them, which terrifies Patrick. Then he gets shot and faints. In Melanie's fantasy, Dr. Torture walks into the room with Sloane. She doesn't want him to hurt her, so Melanie grabs the intercom and tells him what to do. Because she realized how to stop him, she tells him to cut off a finger from her right hand and when he grabs her, Melanie shocks him, then pours the water on him and electrocutes him. Next, she breaks the glass and releases Sloane, lying to her that she was also kidnapped. The women escape into the jungle. JD and Brax drink with the models when they get attacked by men in masks, so they lead. The models into the panic room and Brax calls Mr. Rourke but gets no help from him. The door to the panic room shuts as the masked men get inside the house and then into the bedroom. Meanwhile, Melanie and Sloane are trying to get to the shore when Dr. Torture shows up and tries to kill Sloane. Damon saves her from the fantasy and tells them both to follow him. Simultaneously, Gwen has a nightmare about the burned man grabbing her, but she wakes up next to Alan. Patrick has a nightmare about the same man, then wakes up surrounded by the soldiers. The commanding officer pulls him aside to talk to him about his dog tags and the photo he found in his wallet. Patrick tells him that the boy with him in the photo is him at nine years old. The soldier wants to know what's happening when Patrick explains that he's actually his son and tells him that they're on the magical island that granted his deepest wish, not to be a soldier, but to see his father again. Patrick tells him that he died a hero when he was just a boy. The following morning, Gwen goes to talk to Rourke. He tells her that she and Alan have been married for five years and they have a daughter, Leela. Suddenly, Gwen has new memories about her daughter and Rourke tells her that the island is doing that. He says that many years ago he heard about the island where everything is possible and made his wife search for it with him. But since she died before they arrived, he wished for her to come back when he came there. Rourke tells her to live the life the island has granted her so she joins her new family. Patrick's dad grabs him and tells him that he wants to get him out of there because he believes him. Patrick thinks that he shouldn't change what happened and stay to save his men or he'll regret it forever like he did when he didn't save someone. His dad doesn't want to listen so he battles with him until Patrick makes him stay. Meanwhile, the brothers are held by the masked men who don't believe their story about the island and keep asking where their cat and drugs are. The main guy threatens JD so he lies that it's in the armory. Unfortunately, the main guy makes him stay behind and takes Brax with him. Gwen plays with her daughter on the beach and tells Alan that this is everything she ever wanted, but that she doesn't deserve it. She kisses him and says goodbye, then goes to talk to Rourke again who rejects her request. For another fantasy, Damon takes the girls into a cave and as they walk deeper inside, something appears behind. Sloane, the group walks through a flooded part of the cave and Melanie has a vision of the burned men. They get to the center of the cave with some kind of magic rock showing them their secret desires. Damon tells them that he found the place when a client sent him to find out what it was, but Rourke trapped him there because he's evil. He has a plan to expose him as the monster he is, so he gives Melanie a canteen filled with water from the magic spring and tells her to get it out of there. Damon gives her the number of of a pilot that will come and get them, but in the process, reveals the Melanie was a guest at the island. She tries to deny it, but her fantasy plays out in the rock. Suddenly, Sloane remembers who she is and they argue until Melanie tells Damon to get them to the hotel and off the island. Gwen finds Julia and tells her that she wants a new fantasy because her biggest regret is someone dying because of her in a fire. She begs Julia to help and she tells her that she doesn't want a new fantasy, but her true fantasy. Gwen storms Rourke's office and confronts him with what Julia told her, saying that he misled her because he didn't give her the do-over she actually wanted. Rourke agrees and she leaves her wedding band, saying that it's what she needs to do. Then, proceeds to the door. Gwen finds her apartment building on the other side and runs to her place, only to find it already on fire. When her neighbor calls out for help from the apartment above, she runs towards his place and sees JD and Brax on the stairwell. Gwen tries to open her neighbor's door and when she can't she goes to get help when she runs into Patrick. He's too afraid to help and tells her to wait for the fire department. 
but she runs in regardless and tries to find a tool to break the door down when she collapses from the smoke. Meanwhile, Brax takes the men through the garage and distracts them to get to the armory. He shoots them with a giant shotgun through the closed door. The girls and Damon hear the gunfire and the two begin to bicker when he tells them to grow up and realize that revenge isn't going to change anything. Suddenly, Dr. Torture attacks him, then Sloane, and they all struggle to get him away. But, in the end, Damon pushes him over a cliff and falls together with him. Melanie grabs his map and they head to the mansion. In the meantime, Patrick's dad tells him to stay and take watch as he and his men enter. Rax comes out of the armory with an activated grenade and makes the men drop their weapons, then puts on a mask so the one guarding his brother won't know who he is. The soldiers enter the mansion, but Patrick sees Brax taking the masked men to the den. With the grenade in his hand, he thinks that will be the grenade that will kill his dad. So he sneaks up to Brax and tells him to turn around, but he recognizes him and takes the mask off, asking Patrick what he's doing in his fantasy. The main guy grabs the grenade and the other one fights with Patrick. When his gun goes off, prompting the man that's guarding JD to look, the soldiers kill him and enter inside, saving Patrick and the models. Rax is fighting with the main guy for the grenade and Patrick the other one for the gun when the soldiers show up and the main guy gets ready to throw the grenade at them. When Patrick shoots him and Brax manages to grab the grenade before it falls, they're all happy because they won when JD gets shot, prompting all of them to start retreating. Almost all of the soldiers die in the fight, including Patrick's dad. But Patrick and Brax manage to escape. Simultaneously, Melanie finally confesses to Sloane that she's the reason she's there, and then she realizes that they can call her husband and give him the number of the pilot. Instead of going to the hotel, he agrees to help them. At the same time, Julia pulls Gwen out of the burning apartment, alive. Patrick and Brax find Melanie and Sloane in the control room. Then they all come up into the hotel only to be stopped from getting to the dock by Rourke. Suddenly, Gwen walks in and tells them that she figured out they were only a part of someone else's fantasy because of her neighbor, Nick. They were all connected to Nick and what happened to him that night which would make the fantasy. They are in a big revenge fantasy. Rourke confirms it but tells them they all have to die in return for Nick's death. Suddenly, they hear the plane and run out to the dock, but when they all arrive there, the plane gets taken down by the masked men. The group escapes and regroups in the jungle, realizing that the only way to stop the fantasies is to destroy the spring in the cave with a grenade. The moment they get into the cave they split up and begin experiencing weird things. Patrick gets attacked and pulled under the water. When he pulls himself out, a zombified version of his dad comes after him and they begin to struggle until he strangles him. Patrick gets out of the water and Melanie stabs him. Sloane sees her doppelganger, who acts the way she did in high school. But Sloane tells her that she will never be her again when she gets attacked by Dr. Torture. Brax runs into JD, who tells him that he should have died instead when his eyes start tearing. Black Goo, Gwen sees her daughter and she takes her to Nick. He confronts her for leaving him to die and she tries to apologize when she hears Patrick scream. She finds Brax and suddenly Melanie appears explaining that the revenge fantasy was hers. Apparently, she orchestrated the whole revenge fantasy on the island because she had one. Really good date with Nick, but he died the night they were supposed to have their second. One, Melanie confronts all of them for their participation in Nick's untimely death and her despair. Sloane manages to distract her just long enough so Gwen can take her knife and Brax can grab the grenade. They finally reach the spring when Mr. Rourke appears. He steals back the grenade and tells them that he's trapped on the island so he can have his wife. Julia forever. She manifests on the island every day not knowing who he is because he imagined her. Like the day they met, Gwen pleads with him to help them, but Melanie shows up and he says that the fantasy must play out to its natural conclusion and throws the grenade in the spring. Julia waits for him outside and convinces him to do the right thing. So when he comes back, he tells the rest how they can save themselves. Patrick is still alive and willing to sacrifice himself for the others. But Sloane is the only one that didn't get a fantasy. So she drinks the water from the spring and wishes for Melanie and Nick to be together forever. Nick grabs Melanie and pulls her back into the spring but she comes right back up again and throws the grenade at them. Patrick jumps on it to save them. The next day, 
Gwen, Brax, and Sloane meet in the hotel lobby where Rourke tells them that Patrick saved them, dying as a hero. They prepare to leave and Gwen asks him what will happen to him, to which he replies that he will stay and protect the island, living without regret. Rourke approaches Brax and tells him that technically he was a part of his brother's fantasy, which means he has one left. Brax says that he wants his brother alive, but for that to last, he would need to stay there forever. Gwen and Sloane get on the plane and when it begins the takeoff procedure, they see JD on the plane who tells them that he won't be coming and waves goodbye to his brother as the plane leaves.